Joined by Mark Carvel of PGA Tour Radio. And Mark, um, so much of the like outside sport, like it's, it's this way in college football, it's this way in a lot of sports, it's this way in the PGA with the whole live and PGA thing. It's so much stress and negativity. I would say that yesterday with the, the Shoffley and Bryson DeChambeau thing and, and, and Xander Shoffley winning uh, with a putt, the last, you know, the last stroke of the entire tournament won it, won it was a really good feeling for the PGA overall and golf as a whole. I would think so. As, as I've said recently in a number of different uh, interviews that I've done, uh, it seems these days there's more drama off the golf course than there is on the golf course. And obviously yesterday we had drama on the golf course. That was good. It was good for the game of golf. And, and look, I mean, I think, at the end of the day, you want to see the best players playing against the best, whether they're live or here. But, uh, yes, yeah, so I, I would say that was a good thing. I think fans in general, uh, even though I think Bryson probably made a few more fans this past week uh, that maybe not were not fans of his prior to it. But, uh, no, I was very pleased, and I think it was very good that Xander Shoffley won for, for many reasons, not just because of that, just because of that, you know, the stigma that he wasn't, Hasn't won a major yet. Was in close a number of times, but uh, the golf was spectacular this week, Paul. And I think that was that really should be the big story. Yeah, it, it was. It was fantastic. And um, you know, I don't know. I can't remember the last major we had that was this tense. Uh, you know, coming down the stretch, and for Xander Shoffley, a guy who is the perpetual runner-up, and you know, lots of top tens, and you know, a few seconds and thirds, and um, you know, just had not broken through yet. Uh, how big of a relief had that had that had to be for him? Well, I'm sure it was, and it was interesting. I I talked to him after the round, and you know, he bogeyed the tenth, which was the easy, basically playing as the easiest hole in the course at par five. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, he had, he had, he was throwing darts at both eleven and twelve, making back to back birdies. And I asked him. I said, it looked to me like the look on his face throughout the whole day was like, I'm not going to let this happen. And even particularly after that, uh, I just think his attitude was, was great. He was more aggressive. I think yesterday, which I think players can, when they get in that position, not that they're not aggressive, but it seemed like Xander maybe wasn't just trusting himself and just going for it. I think without question yesterday, he just went for it. It's like, as I said, he, and he kind of nodded his head when I asked him, I said, you weren't going to let that happen again. And he, he kind of agreed with that. And I think that's good. I mean, it shows a lot of metal. And all those experiences obviously helped him into that situation. But I think that, you know, you, as a golfer, you're just trying to put yourself in that position as often as possible. And I think he just said, you know what? I, I'm going to get it done today. How difficult is it for someone like Xander Shoffley to – Look, you know, and, I, and you know they they watch the leaderboard. They know what's going on. It's not like you can completely block it out. But knowing that Bryson DeChambeau is as hot as he can be, and that DeChambeau's strategy is now, um, I don't I don't necessarily need to go win this thing. I just need to make sure that you know hope that Xander Shoffley loses it. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I think all players at, at that level they're they're trying to win. Uh, I don't think they're trying. They're really all that worried about whether they finish second or third. I mean, the goal is to win a championship. Uh, I, I think, you know, and again, it was it was interesting because coming off ten, you know, there's a big scoreboard short of eleven, and he was he was looking at it, and he saw what Xander was doing. He saw what Victor Hovland was doing. Uh, he knew at that point he had dropped out of the lead because I think Hovland maybe had had birdied something to get the twenty under. I can't I can't remember uh, exactly, but I think there was a transition there and. Hovland was a few groups ahead of him. So, uh, you know, you could hear the roars throughout the golf course. But the reality was he had more holes left to play. And I think that uh, – did it affect him? Sure. I mean, it, you, you wouldn't be normal if you didn't think about it or you didn't, you know, kind of see what was going on. And then, you know, you just he just took control. 
Bryson DeChambeau uh, was as locked in as you could be down the stretch, and and he's someone who's played really well this year. Do you see him continuing kind of on the arc that he's been on as we get into the next the next majors? I mean, I, I, I don't – assuming he stays healthy, yeah. I mean, why not? I mean, we know he's talented. You know, he plays this game a little different than others, than, than most others. Uh, but I also think that it, it takes – it's unusual, and, I, and I've talked about this, and it's, it's sort of my only, I wouldn't say negative part about the Live Tour is that you're playing against the same guys every week, but what are you playing for? I mean, you know, most of these guys, are it's all guaranteed money. So I think he's different. I think Brooks is different. Uh, they're, they're not your typical uh, player in the sense of, you know, they're, they're it's, it's, I guess it's hard to explain, maybe, and, and maybe I'm not explaining it correctly. But well, there's I, a difference. There's kind of an edge to them, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. And you know, even though they're, it's again, they're, they've chosen to go where they go, and that's fine. And I have no problem with that, anyway. But I think the competitive side of it is a little different. So I think it takes a different person, a different player, type of player, to be able to come back and compete in a situation now that they're not so much familiar with. And I think Bryson is certainly one of them that can do it and because he does it his way. And, and same thing with Brooks. Uh, I, I think it's unusual. But, no, I, it wouldn't shock me at all if he, he, he continues to play well. And, and who knows? I mean, he could possibly win at Piners. It's a long golf course. Uh, it, it's, there's no reason why he couldn't. But as we know, week in and week out, these guys, in order to do that, you know, things have to be right. Your golf game has to be right, and things have to come together. And uh, certainly it came together this week for Bryson as, and as it, as it did at the masters. And he seems to be in a good spot. Who was your biggest positive surprise and negative surprise from this last weekend? Uh, you know, I think it's all, it's, it's kind of all positive Paul, in the sense of, I think it was a good week for the game of golf. I mean, it was competitive out there. Uh, you know, I mean, it was a golf course that was very receptive and, I would have liked to have seen Valhalla a little firmer and faster. And I'm sure the PGA of America would have as well, but it wasn't. And these guys were able to take advantage of it. Uh, I don't know. Disappointment. Uh, you know, I, I kind of thought Rory was going to win three in a row like he did back in 2014. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, I mean, could he, are you disappointed in Sahit Sagala? I mean, he hasn't been there that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he, you know, he was there, uh, but I would say the biggest surprise was Victor Hovland without question. I mean, there's a guy that early in the week that, Hey man, I, mean, I wasn't even thinking about playing here. I mean, his golf game went from without question in my mind, the best player in the game after winning the FedEx cup back uh, last August. So, I mean, he was having a hard time breaking 75, uh, but he found something. He, now, of course he went back to his, uh, is old the teacher he was using before he made another switch to go work with someone else. Uh, he was the biggest surprise disappointment. I don't know. I mean, with, with everything that kind of went on, it was a kind of a surreal week, uh, with everything that happened. Uh, I think at the end of the day, uh, I think the guy that probably should have won deserved to win did win. Yeah. And, um, you know, um, you were on tour, you know this. What can this be, like, finally breaking through for Xander? Does this give him a new confidence going into um, into into future majors? Or d- does it not affect guys like that if, if you know, he like he's so far, far beyond the athlete that I'll ever be, so I may not under, understand what it's what it's like, so. Well, I mean, I, I, he's always confident. I mean, if you're, mm-hmm. if you're, if you're not confident as a golfer, then you're going to have problems. I think it certainly helped him. Uh, he's proven to himself that, you know, after a number of disappointments, he can do it. Uh, is it going to mean he's going to win a bunch more majors? I don't know. I mean, there's so many good players out there, Paul, that it, it's hard to, to, to label it that way. But I do think it's going to help him going forward. Uh, it, every time I, I've always believed, every time you play around the golf at the professional level or any level, so to speak, you have to take something away from it, whether you win or lose. You have to take a positive going forward that's going to help you going forward. And I think this week is a great boost to Xander. Uh, we know he's talented. He's shown his talent 
year in and year out. Uh, it's definitely going to help him with the confidence once he gets there again. But you can only do so much as a player. I mean, you do your best, but sometimes other guys do better than you do. Absolutely. Well, Mark, uh, thanks so much for hopping on. Uh, I always enjoy uh, getting to talk to you when we do. It's been a, it's been a little bit since we've had you on the show. It has. Yeah, it's been it's been a little bit, but uh, but thank you so much. And uh, we'll, we'll probably reach back out uh, when the when the open the U.S. Open comes up here uh, again here in a, in, a, in a month. Oh, no problem, Paul. Always, always happy to join you. Thanks so much. All right. That's Mark Carvel of PGA Tour Radio with us here.